Hey there, Internet. So here we are back at the lathe, and I just wanted to show the uh, synchronized jog to a distance mode that I just figured out how to do. This thing really kicked my ass. Uh, sometimes I, I wish I would have paid a little more attention in math class. But anyway, I have it working. It's a bit of a hack. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of refactoring of the, of the whole timer code. But th 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 I might explain that in a later video. But here's the, the mode. And um, what we'll do is we'll change the pitch to, to one millimeter per revolution. I'm going to hand turn the spindle just so uh, there's not a noise issue. So we'll go ahead and update the pitch here. And then I'll tell it to go ahead and jog Z, uh, Z plus one millimeter. Here, I'll click do jog. Nothing will happen. And then as I turn the spindle, nothing happens. You gotta love a demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the spindle and the carriage should move that way. And then when it hits a millimeter, it'll stop. And it's no longer moving. So I hit do jog again. And it will calculate another millimeter and then stop. If I want to increase the pitch to something crazy, I can. And if I want to go in the negative Z direction, uh, two millimeters, go ahead and do jog. It'll be a lot more aggressive now. I'm doing another two millimeters. Now, again, there's backlash. So the initial two millimeters is going to be two millimeters less the backlash. So we'll go ahead and do this again. Should go right back on the 10. That's one millimeter and two millimeters. So we're, uh, we're about a thou off just probably due to the lead screw. So that's how it works. Um, I'm going to make the UI a little bit better. This is, uh, this was really to, to get it to work in a way that I could test it, but, um, I want to be able to make it easy to jog back and forth. Obviously if you're, if you're, if you're cleaning up a part or you're, you're making a bunch of passes on a part, you want to be able to, to feed, uh, go back, feed, go back or whatever you want to do there. So. In a second, uh, we'll go over and I'll try to explain how this works and why it's so confusing. And it might give you a little insight into uh, how the code works. I'm going to do my best to explain how this works, but it's pretty confusing to me at times. So apologies if this doesn't come through uh, crystal clear. But essentially, the way the code works is uh, if you think about a, you know, a line of values um, at some point pick some random point on the line it could be zero where that's going to be your starting position and what you have like for a normal for a normal CNC kind of motion all you really need to do is know where the start is and know where the end is and then you just figure out how many steps you need to do to get there you need to figure out the direction to get there you set the, the direction and then you step until you've stepped the number of steps that you've calculated. Pretty simple. Um, for the spindle sync, it's a little bit more confusing. So you're going to have some point at which you start. And again, potentially the spindle is, is spinning continuously. So this, this has to be somewhat arbitrary. But uh, you have some starting position. And initially, you're going to set your encoder position to the starting position. And you're going to set a tool pointer to the starting position. And the way the code works is as the spindle continues to spin, and, it, and, it, and again, it can spin uh, counterclockwise or it can spin clockwise. Um, if it's spinning counterclockwise in my setup, the encoder value is going to increase. So what's going to happen is we're going to increase the encoder value, and at some point, we're going to uh, that we, we, we're gonna, we've calculated a step size for a, a number of encoder ticks to equal one stepper step. So nothing happens until the encoder moves one of those units. And that unit is determined by the pitch that you set. 
So for instance, if the encoder has 2,400 ticks per revolution and your, and your stepper motor has 3,200 ticks per revolution, then uh, you're gonna have a, a factor of point, uh, 0.75. So for every 0.75 encoder ticks, you're gonna go one stepper tick. So once you've reached that, you know, where, where you're able to do one stepper tick, then you tell the motor to move and then you move the tool pointer over one. And as that's happening, the spindle is gonna to continue to progress. And then you get to the next unit and you issue another stepper tick and it progresses. Now the spindle can go both ways, even in the middle of an operation. So if the spindle or if the encoder starts to go negative, and you go one full tick, the tool pointer is actually going to, it's, it's going to see that and it's going to step the other direction. Um, and so the, one of the reasons this is so confusing is your starting position might be here and you know, whether you're going this way or this way is one dimension and whether your encoder is ticking positive or negative is another dimension dimension. So if you, if you want to go this way, but your encoder is ticking this way, like what is the right thing to do and how do you calculate everything? Um, the, the, the calculations are pretty much done relative to the, they're done relative to the, the calculated pitch and the number of stepper pulses. So it, it calculates, uh, based on the encoder ticks, it calculates the, it translates that into full stepper pulses. And those full stepper pulses are compared to the tool positions recording of how many stepper pulses have happened. And that's, that's what I use to try to figure out whether I need to move or not. Um, once you get to the goal position, so, you know, a, as the encoder goes and you issue, it goes, it goes enough far enough past, you issue a step, the pointer moves over, it continues to go. Eventually you're going to get to the point where the stepper has stepped to the goal position and then you can stop. And the way that my code is currently working now is it's resetting every time it gets to the goal position, it resets everything back to zero. And whether the, you want to move in the negative Z direction or the positive Z direction, uh, every time it always goes back to zero. Now, this, what this doesn't allow you to do is resync the spindle for something like threading. So the next thing that I'm going to work on is to, you know, figuring out a way to divide the spindle counts so that when, when you start to move, so the encoder will start to move and it will basically make sure that, um, wherever the, wherever the start position is, so let's say you started on, on zero, it's gotta be 2,400. It has to divide into whatever this number is, however big or small it is. It's got to be able to divide into that evenly. And then once that happens, it'll dwell until that happens. And once you get an even division, then uh, it'll go ahead and start the tool pointer calculations. And, and then so it'll go the, the little unit and issue a step. And then the stepper pointer, the, the tool pointer will go ahead and catch up. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, it's not easy to explain or think about or code for. But uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know down below and uh, I'll let everybody know when I make more progress. I think the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, the virtual stops as well as being able to feed, kind of bounce between the two stops easily. Uh, and then after that, I'll go ahead and work on the threading. So thanks for watching.